This one's not easy. So, 1875. The magazine Animal World? The cover shows a deer that decided to jump off a cliff to escape from hunting dogs. Maybe escape isn't the right word. This is definitely its last jump. To die from the dog's teeth or from falling off a cliff. Difficult choice. But sometimes there are really sad stories in the animal world. Today, you'll learn why penguins bully their children, why swans lose their meaning of life, and why old lions are kicked out of the pride. The pictures that you see now may seriously upset you. A Chinese woman named Yan Yan Sao unexpectedly captured a unique and tragic moment. She noticed a young swan anxiously beating the water surface with its wings and next to it an older bird. Unfortunately, the second swan was dead. The young swan was very worried about it, then put its head under the water and, well, you got it. After a few minutes, the young swan also died as if it couldn't bear the separation. But there's an even stranger case. Take a look at this photo. Yes, again the swan, but this one suddenly fell from the sky on a car. Why did it do it? Well, you've probably heard the theory about swan love, the strongest love in the world. When a swan loses its beloved, it also loses the meaning of life. It flies up high, folds its wings, and... Yes, yeah, sad. Kind of a romantic end. Maybe this bird that fell on the car also lost the love of its life. Unfortunately, the swan couldn't tell us about the reasons, even if it could speak human. It had to be put down in a clinic because of serious injuries. Despite the well-known theory, scientists are skeptical, as usual. Nobody managed to prove whether the swan fell deliberately or maybe accidentally crashed into the windshield of the car in flight. The bird's chest injuries were so serious that veterinarians couldn't find the original cause of the fall. Also, it's believed that sometimes swans can mistake the road surface for a river. For example, in the early morning or at sunset or immediately after rain? Well then, the predictable result, an attempt to land which ends in tragedy. But if it all isn't so clear with swans, it seems that in the case of lions, scientists do have it figured out. Needless to say, the kings of the jungle don't rush to the ground from high altitude, that'd be strange, but inside their species, there's a different drama. Take a look at these photos. It's heartbreaking. The old, exhausted lion is living its last hours, even minutes, because it was banished from its pride. And not because it did something terrible, it's not Lion King. The social structure of the pride is based on certain roles. Lionesses are hunting, and lions are responsible for protecting the territory. It's quite simple. At the age of about two or three years old, young males leave their pride and try to take possession of another male's pride. From time to time, there are fatal fights, where sometimes young and adult lions die. If a young lion wins and the old one remains alive, the latter has to leave its family forever. The surviving losers often become vagabonds and are forced to hunt on their own, so they lose weight and become scavengers at the end of their lives. Most likely, the lion from these pictures suffered exactly this fate. Yes, big cats are so tightly connected with their family that they're practically unable to survive alone. However, another scenario with other dangers is also possible. Even if a lion doesn't die of starvation, it can still be an easy prey for other predators. For example, hyenas. Usually they don't risk to attack a pride, but since it's just a lone male, why not try your luck? But even an old lion without its pride has a chance to survive. It only needs to find a friend. And here it is. Look, came at the last minute. All that's missing is the superhero cloak. Lone lions, like many group mammals, sometimes form bachelor groups consisting of different males who once met each other. They may be relatives or random acquaintances just bumped into each other in the middle of the savanna. Two of them have a much better chance of survival because lions always hunt in groups. They say that such a couple of old men can even win back a pride. Of course, then they'll have to share a new family with their friend. But it's still better than starving to death. And, you know, we can imagine something like this in the human world? Surely there are even a couple of movies where old heroes unite to show young people who's the coolest. If you already remembered such a movie, write it in the comments. Well, I have another quite strange tradition. Well, it's not even a tradition, but an amazing example of emotional display among monkeys. This was discovered by the BBC One documentary filmmakers when they were shooting a series of Spy in the Wild. They planted a robot monkey with a camera in a pack of langurs. That's a species of monkey, to see where it leads. And the consequences came as a surprise. Actually, if I came across a monkey like this, I'd be scared. I mean, really, just look at it. It's creepy. 
Look at those camera eyes. But Langers quickly took the robot for their baby, put it on the pack, and even tried to take care of it as if it were alive. But then an unexpected thing happened. One of the monkeys dropped the robot and it fell to the ground. The whole pack became so sad as if not a strange, motionless stranger whom they'd just seen had fallen from a tree but one of their own babies. It fell down and crashed. Perhaps for the first time, such a touching and sad moment was filmed on camera. And it says a lot about the degree of empathy among animals. Monkeys who hug and comfort each other. It's incredible. And yes, it's not easy to watch the grieving families, but there's something amazing about this sad sight. How little do we actually know about other inhabitants of the planet? And how much more to learn? For example, have you ever heard that even birds can grieve? Not apes, which are quite close to man, but emperor penguins, the largest and heaviest penguins in the world. When they lose a baby, they really grieve, try to support each other, hug each other in their own way, and no, really, my heart just breaks. Just listen to the sound of a mother that lost its chicks. <laughs> It's unbearable. Perhaps you already have the impression that all penguins adore each other's chicks and live in one tight group. Well, there's nothing surprising about it. Most people think of penguins as cheerful and carefree birds living in the cold, polar regions of the Earth. But this is not always the case. In fact, penguins can be quite unpleasant if you enter their territory without an invitation. And it doesn't matter to them who crossed their borders, a predator or another penguin, or even a too active chick. Young penguins, as any other babies, are often full of energy. They constantly need to do something to run somewhere, so it's no wonder that chicks are drawn to explore everything around them. Often they leave their territory and dare to move to another. And there's this, where exploring can turn to tragedy. When a young penguin enters territory of others uninvited, adult penguins can repeatedly intimidate or even peck at it. If a young penguin doesn't take the hint quickly enough, it'll have a painful ending. Adult peckering can be ruthless. And in some cases, several penguins join forces and continue to hit with their beaks until it's over. Brutal. Ruthless. Animal experts aren't sure why this happens at all. Most likely, the adult penguins guard their territory and take it very seriously, and the chick just chose the wrong place to play in the wrong time. But the most famous and most tragic thing that animals do that's known to man is done by marine mammals. Yes, I'm talking about numerous cases of beaching themselves. Every year, there are reports from all over the world. Whales and dolphins strand themselves in packs on land and then they die. Sometimes these are isolated cases, but other times dozens of individuals beach themselves on the coast simultaneously. It's impossible to save them. When it comes to such behavior of animals, many immediately think about human activity. We can apply any theory here, plastic, harmful emissions, sonars that confuse the whales and force them to strand themselves, but such incidents have been known for a long time. Even Aristotle wrote about them, and in his time, mankind was hardly managing to seriously harm nature. You think that Aristotle is too much? Here's some later testimonies in 1938 in the USA and 1964 in Australia. But still, what makes sea animals go to their deaths? It can't be a conscious act. The most popular theory is that something happens to one or two whales and then they send a distress signal and the rest come to the rescue. But the sick animal leads their friends to the shallow water where all of them die. In some cases, the reasons for this behavior is even known. For example, dolphins living off of the northeastern coast of the United States often get pneumonia and strand themselves. Another theory is that dolphins or whales escape from a predator attack, swim too close to the shore, and get stuck at low tide. If we believe the third version, then the animals are just stunned. Under normal conditions, they orientate themselves in space with the help of echo-reflecting signals. If the animals are stunned, they're lost, and may strand themselves as a result. For example, in 2001, researchers from the Bahamas found a connection between the number of stranded dolphins and the U.S. Navy exercises with the sonar conducted nearby. Can these results be applied to all known cases? I doubt it. But all this remains just a theory, one of the thousands of theories that people develop around animal behavior. Perhaps if we observe them more closely, we can learn more. So, well, you know, keep an eye on your cat or dog, or your hamster. Who knows what secrets they may hide. All right, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and all that. Already done it? All right, get back to your hamster before it beaches itself.